Hey everyone, it's Sensioso7, and it has been a while since I first beat Persona 5. Since then, I've really, really, really wanted to do a review of this game, as there's so much to say about this game. I actually planned on doing this video a long time ago, but I just could not figure out how to get everything I want to say about this game into one video. But I've worked the script out, so here we go. To be honest, I don't think I've ever played a game before, to my knowledge at least, that has had this big of an impact on me. This game, seriously, like when I first bought it, I didn't necessarily think, I thought it would be fun, but it would only really keep my attention for a short period of time, as with like most RPGs. No, that, that is not true. I'm happy to say that that is not true. This game has constantly made me want to keep playing the game constantly. Whether it's the gameplay that's so fun, the visuals that blow my eyes off, and a cast of characters that is so good. Yeah. So you could probably already know what I'm going to score the game, but let's get more in depth into the game. And also keep in mind that I this is my first Persona game. I have not played Persona 3 or 4 or any of the first other, other games yet. Yet. I'll probably play them in the future, given how much I love this game and whatnot so my opinions may be different than yours and there are going to be major spoilers for those few of you if who have not played the entire game yet and don't want to be spoiled i suggest you run <laughs> anyways let's begin my review of persona 5 The Persona series has always had a unique style of gameplay. It's been, it's divided into two parts. The first part is similar to that of a visual novel while you're in reality. Pretty much something like you could call a social simulator, you could say. And then the second part is similar to that of an RPG, where you have turn-based battles, more exploration, and going through like various worlds. Kind of like that of any RPG while you're in the metaverse. And trust me, both sides of gameplay are a lot of fun. In reality, you have control on what you do that day. Essentially, you can do whatever you want that day. You do go to school considering you're still a student and you have to live an honest student life, but after school or if you don't have school as a, you can choose what you want to do. You can do whatever you want. You can go to sleep if you want to listen to what Morgana says. You can create various items that can help you while exploring the metaverse, or you can just do things like watch TV, or go fishing, or batting cages, or one of the most important ones, spending time with confidants. Confidants are very important because they pretty much help you learn more about the characters that you're interested in that make some form of deal with you. Some confidants on characters are better designed than others, and many confidants follow the same formula. The confidant explains the problems to you, some adult starts the conflict, and then everything gets resolved in the last rank or two. And to be honest, it's kind of annoying that they use the same trope over and over. But to be honest, at least all the characters have their own sort of story to different them from all the others. And that's pretty much my thoughts on that. They're not, there's not much else to say on the social part, but that's only the first part of it. Now we have to get into the second part where I was talking about that RPG stuff I was saying before. So what's that like? Well, it's a lot of fun. Essentially, you explore palaces within the metaverse, which are pretty much like dungeons, you can say, from like the other Persona games. And they are so much fun to complete. Well, except the K Okumura Palace. That one's just crap. Most palaces are really fun to complete and have good level design and villains worthy of owning a palace and the fighting and combat is the biggest highlight. The battles are turn-based, but there's so much to love about them. Whether it's just the music in the background and whatnot, and it's just fun. It can get a bit tedious at times, but most of the time it's actually a real treat. Just hearing last surprise and then just being able to fight enemies. And in this game, unlike other RPGs, the main thing you want to do is actually find the weakness of an, of an enemy, then you can use an all-out attack and win. 
or you can negotiate with them to maybe bring them over to your side or give you money or an item or whatnot. But most of the time, you're just going to want to do an all-out attack. I honestly love the combat as it feels like you can actually win compared to other RPGs where you get hit various times and don't really have enough stuff to really keep you going and you'll die a bunch of times. I've died a few times in this game, but not really enough to make it un- not much to make it unbearable. Nothing to really make me not want to do it, to discourage. Not really there at all. And it's really fun that they have like different styles of gameplay where you can just crunch down on the enemies or you can just use the weaknesses to really get you to that victory screen. But overall, both sides of gameplay are a lot of fun. And to think this is only the first category of this review. Well, to sum this one up in a few words, this game's visuals and music are legendary. Okay, I'll get more in depth on that. First, the visuals. This game is so goddamn good to look at. This game is so good on a graphical level as everything just oozes with style, especially the menus and all out attacks. Everything looks so good. And the one thing that really does get me is the fact that you're at, that the game actually takes place in Tokyo as compared to like the other Persona games where they take place in like fictional places and somehow the people at Atlas were able to make the Tokyo that's in Persona 5 look a lot like the to have the same sort of feeling as that of real life Tokyo not that I've ever been to Tokyo but you know what I mean the subways and like the lit up streets and like the smaller streets and whatnot and it's so cool. It I've never really been to Tokyo, but man, this game really does give me a good picture of how it looks. And the palaces in the metaverse all have their own state themes. And all of them look real nice to the eye at well as well. And resolution on like frame wise, I mean the game looks really good on PS4. I'm not talking about the PS3 one, but the PS on PS4, the game runs at 1080p. Although it does only run at 30 FPS, which is kind of sad, but eh, who cares? The game looks amazing anyways, due to its art and everything. Seriously, this might be one of the best looking games this generation. This and Cuphead have to be some of the best games on like an art style wise. And music wise, I mean, like any Persona game, it's fantastic. The music is so good. To be honest, they do play a lot of music over and over, but, I mean, come on now. Last Surprise, Beneath the Mask, Willpower, Tokyo Daylight, Rivers in the Desert, and Whims of Fate, absolute classics. And I know I haven't really touched on this much before, although I did already touch visuals, but how does the animation in the game hold up, as there are cutscenes and whatnot throughout the game? Well, the in-game cutscenes are probably the best looking cutscenes the game has to offer, as they they look so good. They look really good. Probably not as good as something like Luigi's Mansion 3 levels of great, but they look nice nonetheless. But there's also another style of animations in this game. The cutscenes that are more designed in an anime style. And they look alright. They hold up fine. I mean, I'll give Atlas the benefit that it looks nicer than the Persona 5 animation, which just ruins the all-out attack. But, there are times where the animation in the actual game can look kinda jarring. I mean, it's nothing really bad. I mean, these types of cutscenes don't happen very often. But, I don't know. I feel like a lot more work could have went into these things to make them look a little bit more pretty. But, really, overall, visuals and music-wise, I mean, it's Persona. It looks amazing. To be honest, I don't have much to comment on this section. I mean, this game lasts for over a hundred hours, and given I got the game several months ago for $20, it definitely meets the quota for a game released in 2017. I do feel that the game does kind of drag itself for a while, and I feel like they, that Atlas added a bunch of fluff and filler to make the game longer. 
but even with it when you take that stuff out this game is still decently long I would complain about the fact that there really isn't any post game content as once you beat the game the only thing you really have is new game plus which is pretty much the same thing except various stats from your original v adventure are brought over so no there isn't post game content but overall good job Atlas All right, this is the part of the review where we're gonna start getting into more of the negative stuff. I've said a lot of positives about this game, but we're gonna move into some negative stuff, so hold on to your seats. And no, I don't think the story is terrible. We'll get to that when we get to that. Overall, the story isn't too bad. It's pretty much just a story about a group of teenagers who use the metaverse to change the hearts of the rotten people that get in their way. And there is a lot of plot in there as well, depending on like how the, how like more party members join your party and who you to plan to plan heists on and whatnot. And it's not pretty bad. In fact, it actually gets very good until we get to the big reveal. And this is where I'm putting that spoiler warning thing another time because now is when I'm going into the spoilers. It was pretty easy to figure out that there was one member of the Fam Thieves that was obviously the traitor, Akechi. I was aware of this beforehand, I mean it wasn't necessarily spoiled to me what he did, but I knew that he wasn't necessarily going to be like a big part of the Fam Thieves, he was going to be a traitor. I mean he pretty much reveals that, I mean there's like five times within the game that they reveal he's the traitor before they actually reveal he's the traitor. But what really shows it is that when in Joker's in the interrogation room, which you'd find out throughout the game, eventually Sainijima leaves and Nakechi shows up to actually assassinate Joker by shooting him in the head. But even though we're supposed to believe that he's actually dead, Joker's actually still alive. Apparently they sent a fake cognitive Joker into the interrogation room right before Akechi shows up. But this just brings up so many questions. Was the real Joker in the interrogation room the whole time? Why did we never see the fake cognitive Joker? Is the interrogation scene happening in the palace or in the reality? And if it's in the palace, why does Psy look so different? You know what I mean? I feel like they only put this scene in the game just so they can make a shocking moment where, oh no, Joker's dead! And then, oh my god, he isn't dead, he's still alive! I don't know, that's really what I feel like they did. And the plot from here, I mean, it gets better, but it's definitely not the same thing as it was at the start of the game. And even though the story isn't bad, it could definitely be worse. I mean, I mean, it wasn't as bad when I first beat the game, but I definitely have known how bad the story can get after a while. And... Speaking of beating the game... Alright, here's where the negativity comes in at full first, so get ready. So essentially, once you beat the final boss, aka God, the world finally restores itself to the original state, only with Morgana disappearing, which makes all the crew sad. Although I can understand, we beat God! Why aren't we more happy? It's just not the most satisfying thing. I mean, yeah, getting the final hit on God was awesome, but there's like no satisfaction of actually finishing the game. There's no satisfaction of we beat God. I know Morgana's gone, but like, seriously, why is it like that? And then Joker turns himself into the police for some reason. And this is where the ending really starts to feel like a lot of filler. Essentially, there's just a bunch of plot, if you can even call a plot, about how Joker's in jail and how the confidants in the game basically try and get him out even though when he doesn't deserve it. Seriously, I just found this as flat out filler. They could have ended the game when Morgana disappeared. When Morgana disappeared and they then end the game there. I mean, that would have been a very strong ending, that would have been a pretty good impact, but instead they added a lot of fluff to the ending. And no about that kind of fluff. I don't know. 
And then, and it's just a bunch of crap. He eventually does get out of jail and Mona does eventually come back because clearly we haven't made that dying joke enough yet. And then we get to the last cutscene where Joker finally leaves for home. And might I say, what could be so valuable back at home? Seriously, this whole game happens and he makes all these friends and gets in so many scenarios. I feel like he would have much more strong connections to his actual friends as opposed to his parents who never even decided to message him once while he was on his one year probation. I don't know why. Although I will say once you get to the end credits and Hoshi to Bokura 2 plays in the background, it really, really, really does sink in that the game is over. And to be honest, this is what makes the ending not as bad as it could be. Everything I said before is bad, but Honestly, once you get to the end credits, that's when I finally feel like this game really gives you a satisfying payoff. Because it just makes you feel so sad because you spend the whole game spending time with people and whatnot and getting these crazy situations and only to just throw it all away. It's really sad. But I don't know, maybe, per and overall, I feel like the ending is pretty bad. Besides, like, the end credits, but everything beyond that, it, it blows. But who knows, maybe Persona 5 Royal can fix this. I mean, I haven't seen spoilers for the game, so there's that. And now, to finally conclude this review... Overall, this game is truly something special. You probably knew from the start I was going to score this game pretty high, and I mean, I'm just going to say it right now, I'm giving this game a 9.5 out of 10, but still, and even though this game does have problems, because I mean, I, at the end of the video, I got pretty negative there, and these would be big problems, but the stuff that this game did good, it did it so well that it honestly can get, that the bad stuff kind of gets washed away by the good stuff, because there's so much good stuff. This game is truly a work of art, and, and to think that this is the game that finally got me off my lazy butt and actually buy a PS4 Pro, to think, this game is truly a work of art. I'd pretty much recommend anyone to play it. I mean, they have difficulty sections, selections for anyone, so I'd recommend playing it. Well, thanks for watching, and please take care. And also, to address it now, yes, I will review Persona 5 Royal once that comes out in the West, though I probably won't go into it as much as I did here, so yeah. But anyways, thanks for watching, and have a good day. It's showtime! Did you enjoy the show? Well, <laughs> time for the highlights.